In this case, let me turn to the relevant statutory provisions. Um, they're um, conveniently set out in the Crown's factum. Um, you can take that in hand at pages four to six. And the issue is what does the Crown have to prove in order to satisfy a trial judge that something is what the schedule to either the Narcotic Control Act or the Control Drugs and Substances Act um, proscribes. So you'll see at the bottom of page four, um, the respondent has set out the definitions from the Narcotic Control Act at uh, paragraph eight, and then over at uh, page six, the definitions as they were somewhat modified under the Control Drugs and Substances Act. Contrary to the respondent's submission, it's the appellant Clay's position that there is ambiguity in the Narcotic Control Act. The schedule, if we look at page 5, which tells us that cannabis sativa is a prescribed substance, defines cannabis sativa, amongst other things, to include, number 2, cannabis marijuana. And yet, if you go back to page 4, under the definition of marijuana, it has it as cannabis sativa L, which uh, from the case law seems to have some significance. Yes. 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 Um, section 6 of the Narcotic Control Act, which um, I don't have before you, but deals with cultivation, refers only to marijuana, not cannabis sativa. Now, what's significant is that marijuana is not a term, according to the evidence, generally used by botanists to refer to any emanation from the plant. It's certainly not a term that was used by the expert in the case, Dr. Small. Indeed, for what it's worth, according to just to the Ladane Commission, marijuana was an old Spanish-American term for intoxicant. The dictionary defines it as an intoxicant. So it seems that in using the word marijuana to mean cannabis sativa, Parliament at least seems to have been aiming at prohibiting an intoxicating form of cannabis sativa. And I would say that that would be consistent with the overall purpose of both acts. That is, the Narcotic Control Act and the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. Now, there's further ambiguity in my submission created by the amendment. If you look at page 6, the definition under Schedule 2, the substance proscribed under the new Controlled Drugs and Substances Act is cannabis. If you look back one page, under the old Narcotic Control Act, it was cannabis sativa. Also, Parliament added in, under the definition for cannabis, mature, and number nine, mature cannabis stocks that do not include leaves, flowers, seeds, or branches, and fiber derived from such stocks. So they've also expressly excluded non-intoxicating forms of cannabis. Plus, the government, uh, shortly after enacting the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, has decided to provide for licenses for people to grow and distribute hemp. And if I could take you quickly to the um, regulations that, again, the respondent has included. This is in volume three of the respondent's brief of authorities at tab 61. It's quite interesting in terms of the definitions that Parliament provided in the regulations. Under, um, contrary to some of the evidence that was adduced uh, um, at the trial, which obviously precedes the making of these regulations, uh, tab 61, the industrial hemp regulations on the first page define industrial hemp to mean the plant and plant parts of the genera cannabis, the leaves and flowering heads of which do not contain more than 0.3% THC. So, if, sorry, one more point. Um, if you look at page 960, of the regulations, and you'll see the regulatory impact analysis and statement, it's clear that Parliament is uh, passing the regulations to permit 
uh, under the, the description, under the regulatory impact analysis statement, the industrial hemp regulations will permit the legal production and processing of hemp for commercial purposes. So their parliament is creating a supply of lawfully grown, non-intoxicating cannabis in Canada. The reason why that's significant is because on the Crown's broad interpretation of what they have to prove, that is, what is cannabis under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act or cannabis sativa under the Narcotic Control Act, there is a real risk of conviction for possessing harmless substances. The analyst in this case testified that the Health Canada protocol does not require the analyst to find any psychoactive substance in the cannabis or in the plant material being analyzed before they will certify it as cannabis. And when it's put to him, and I leave you with the, the reference, it's the testimony of Mr. McCleary, M small c L E R I E, when he's asked if he's ever certified um, hemp clothing as cannabis, in that case it would be cannabis resin, and therefore making it a prescribed substance under the Control Drugs and Substances Act or the Narcotic Control Act, he said yes. So that means anyone wearing hemp clothing, including Mr. Malmo Levine when he stands before you in his hemp shirt, hemp tie, hemp jacket, is according to the Crown's interpretation, committing the offense of possession of a drug. That is too broad an interpretation, and for the reasons set out in my factum, um, I would submit that, um, like in Skokie Graham, it has to be interpreted to mean at least some. For, forget about setting a threshold. I, I've given up trying to argue for, for thresholds before the court, but there has to at least be some amount of psychoactive substance as opposed to no requirement for